过去早期这个榻呢，因为比较轻便，是挂在墙上的。重要的客人来了以后，就从墙上摘下来，搁在地上让你睡觉。那么这就是下榻，这个意思是从墙上下来。榻这个字本身的意思是指他然接地的意思，就是非常离地非常近。The daybed is one of the earliest types of furniture to emerge in China, and both people and objects could be placed on it. Reading, writing, playing chess, doing embroidery, singing, dancing, and feasting. Even just enjoying the cool air of a summer night. All of these activities centered around daybeds. The painting, Proofreading in the Northern Xi Dynasty, is a vivid portrayal of the use of daybeds. It is said to have been painted by Yang Tzu Hua of the Northern Xi Dynasty and depicts scholar officials proofreading the five classics in the year 556. There are four figures sitting on the daybed. All the things they need to keep themselves happy and entertained are on the daybed too. There are also two armrests and a maid holds up a cushion. A figure reclines sideways on the right-hand side of the bed. The clothes of the four scholar officials are quite different from those worn today. Their thin, delicate shawls stand out in particular. The way they hold their pens is also distinctive. In those days, paper was so thick that it was possible to write on it without resting it on a solid supporting surface. You just held it in your other hand. It seems incredible today that brilliant calligraphy was produced like this. When tables began to get higher, daybeds lost some of the functions they had acquired. Also, houses in those days did not provide as much relief from the summer heat as modern ones do. This, combined with the absence of electric lighting, meant that people tended to spend a lot of time outdoors. They took their furniture with them. The daybed, therefore, became lighter and lighter. Nowadays, some families have folding beds, which they use on outings or when they want to accommodate guests. In fact, far from being a modern invention, these foldable beds date back hundreds of years. Officials, nobles and generals all had folding beds they could use when out hunting or campaigning. To make them easier to carry, these beds were cleverly designed so that they could be folded up and stowed in boxes. Railings were built around daybeds to stop things falling off. This was, in fact, an embryonic form of the Arhat bed. The railings on the early Arhat beds were basically the same as banisters and formed a fence around the daybed that protected both people and things. Over time, the spaces between railing slats were filled in. Now the daybed was surrounded by a sort of screen or windbreak. These screened daybeds were in existence until several decades ago. Almost every well-off family used to own one. The origin of this bed's name is something of a mystery, but Wen Zheng Hung's treatise on superfluous things, written in the late Ming Dynasty, might contain a clue. This book mentions a small rectangular seat used for meditation. This was known as a Maitreya daybed. In fact, the introduction of Buddhism into China played a crucial role in the evolution of Chinese furniture. Before the Qing dynasty, the Arhat bed was often placed in the middle of a hall and used by either the master of the house or his guests.
Scholars also had their uses for the Arhat bed. It was an ideal place to peruse the Confucian classics or enjoy paintings, calligraphy, and antiques. Others would just relax or doze off on it. Visiting friends would also be received on the Arhat bed. A small table would be placed in the middle of the bed so they could sip tea, sample delicacies, or even play chess. 